So it's back to the future. Here we are sitting around. We're going to be waiting a little while to see who wins a statewide Pennsylvania race. Yeah, we're talking about a margin now of about 2,500 votes. And, you know, we got anywhere from 10,000 to 30,000 ballots that are outstanding here. You know, and I think it's important that we look big picture at this, Joe and Mika here. When we look at North Carolina and look at Pennsylvania, who are the senators that are being replaced here? We're talking about Senator Richard Burr and Senator Pat Toomey. I don't think anybody would usually have called these individuals centrists or moderates, but what did those two senators do in 2021? They voted to convict former President Trump following the January 6th insurrection here. So now in North Carolina, you've got Ted Budd, the Trump-backed uh, endorsed candidate who is going to be the Republican nominee for that U.S. Senate seat to replace Burr. Here in Pennsylvania, you've got McCormick and you've got Oz neck and neck here. And there is a reality at play. Last night, you guys, in his brief remarks on stage, he thanked not only his family, but the two other individuals who Mehmet Oz thanked were the former President Trump and Sean Hannity, calling him a good friend who is giving him uh, uh, good advice uh, behind the scenes here. That is the individual that could be replacing Pat Toomey in the U.S. Senate. You know, and I think it's important when we talk about Kathy Barnett, too. You guys, we were talking about this yesterday morning here, the impact that she would potentially have in this race. And I was talking to one of her senior advisors last night who said that they believe that they took a significant portion of Mehmet Oz's vote, especially out here in these greater suburbs around the, uh, the Philadelphia area. You look at Montgomery County, where um, uh, where Kathy Barnett is from, which is the neighboring county to Bucks County here. In Montgomery County, she is actually up in Montgomery County. That is an, uh, where Mehmet Oz actually held his final campaign rally on Monday night, a one in which uh, the former President Trump called in by speakerphone into, and he was hoping to make these significant gains. So what does that tell us? It tells us, number one, that Mehmet Oz and the Donald Trump endorsement still means Mean something to at least a part of the electorate, but there's also an openness to, you know, uh, the Kathy Barnett type candidates. And what we are seeing here is the potential that Barnett could play spoiler if McCormick were to come and eclipse Mehmet Oz here, that potentially uh, in this situation here, she may have diluted the vote enough to give McCormick the chance to take over this and, and win this ultimately. So interesting, and what they'll be counting um, in the coming days, Joe, is mail-in ballots, which uh, Donald Trump was against them. Even yeah, though well, he yeah <laughs> they're, they're, they're some, some of those are counting. Uh, we, we've gone to the big board with Steve a couple times. They're, they can't f figure out exactly where all the votes are coming from. But, you know, Vaughn, let, let's, let's go down again the list uh, of, of races uh, not only this week, but in the past couple of weeks, you had, of course, Donald Trump's candidate, J.D. Vance, doing well in Ohio. You had the Ricketts uh, coming together, the governor and that political organization running over Donald Trump in Nebraska. In Idaho last night, you had a very uh, Trumpist lieutenant governor uh, who many people thought might win, uh, get defeated. Uh, so another person, Trump endorsed, got defeated. Uh, quite a few right-wing, uh, far-right candidates lost in Idaho last night. Well, as you said, one of the highest-profile races, Madison Cawthorn, Donald Trump stayed with him the whole way. He lost last night. And I think in Pennsylvania, it's very telling. And yes, there was a split in the vote, no doubt about it, between Barnett and Oz. At the same time, two out of three Republicans in Pennsylvania voted against Donald Trump's endorsed candidate. I just don't think that would have happened two or three years ago. No, and I think that if McCormick is able to pull this off, it's an opening for others in the Republican Party. I mean, look, Ted Cruz was on the campaign trail with David McCormick out here. Mike Pompeo had endorsed David McCormick here. And if you look ahead towards next week in Georgia and David Perdue loses by a significant margin to incumbent Governor Brian Kemp, you know, there's going to be heads that begin to turn here in a realization that Donald's Trump word is not final. Of course, the former president, you know, he believes that every horse that he picked was going to win here. But clearly, there are Republican voters who are willing to draw a line in the sand. Uh, and whether that is Madison Cawthorn and his litany of controversial statements and past situations that he has put himself into, or whether it is the endorsement of a Nebraska gubernatorial candidate uh, accused credibly by eight women of groping, or 
a lieutenant governor running for governor in Idaho who uh, spoke at a white nationalist conference. The Republican uh, Party's voters uh, clearly are not willing to cross some lines. Whether that ultimately extends to Donald Trump, uh, I think that's a big question that a lot of folks are going to be facing come 2024 here. But for now, I think it is worth noting, though, that his stable of loyalists, uh, you know, every few weeks here does continue to grow despite these losses. J.D. Vance, you know, Alex mm. Mooney, congressman in uh, West Virginia, uh, you know, if Mehmet Oz pulls this off, you're talking about somebody here who could potentially object to election results in 2024. And of course, last note, you guys, is these governor's races here. Doug Mastriano, who endorsed just this last weekend, uh, is, I mean, could be the front man of the efforts to not certify potential 2024 election results. We've talked to the leading GOP candidates in Arizona, Michigan, and Wisconsin for governor, who all could put the 2024 election on the line if they were to, like Doug Mastriano has suggested he would do, uh, would fail to certify the election results if Donald Trump were to run and were to lose in these key